Um, this is Elif. And I have background in educational technology and uh, my toys has a special place in my heart because after my master's degree, it was the first um, job I took in business intelligence domain. And this was in 2013, uh, time is passing so quickly. And uh, yeah, I was a data warehouse developer there and I moved on um, my career in different companies, in different uh, positions, but uh, still I, I really uh, feel that my choice uh, was a really good start for me. And that's why I'm holding the <laughs> offline catalog of my toys. I really yes. uh, suggest uh, people, especially with um, uh, kids, or you might have uh, very young um, nephews, nieces, cousins. So try to log in to my toys. <laughs> and it's when it comes, a look, the good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so today we are going to hear uh, from Sebastian about machine learning in production, um, the productless sorting algorithm at MyToys. So uh, Sebastian studied psychology, focusing on neuroscience and statistics, and he has been um, working as a research scientist at Humboldt University of Berlin until 2015, and he did his PhD also and um, he's working at MyToy since 2016 as a data scientist. So the stage is yours, Sebastian. Let's not uh, spend okay. any more time. Very good. Thank you very much, um, Elif, and welcome to my uh, talk about the product list sorting algorithm um, at MyToy. So one second. Um, Let's start. So, um, Edith gave, gave you a very little introduction uh, just to get uh, a more the feeling um, about the data that we have in the MyToys group. Um, we actually have four shops. That is one is MyToys, that is everything for the little ones. Um, then Le Mango, that is more like a um, shopping community where, for young families. Um, we have also including Mirapodo, that is a shoe. Um, e-commerce platform and um, also Yomonda that is a home of a home and living shop. And I think Elif, when you were in, um, in my toys, we were uh, talking about La Purisa that was never going live. It was uh, the beauty uh, shop of the my toys group. Um, so, and uh, we are making uh, seven, 720 million revenues. Last year we did that um, in the last business year we have around uh, 7 million active customers, 21 million um, visits per month. I think during Corona, to be honest, it was much more. Um, the most of our traffic is mobile. And especially in Christmas, we are the, um, the little helper for uh, Santa Claus. And uh, for that, we are actually uh, delivering around uh, 30 uh, million packages per year. And our team, uh, including also our uh, brick and mortar stores in uh, seven, uh, 17 uh, cities in Germany. We are around uh, 2,000 uh, people. So, and one important thing I'm working on since three years, I think, I, I have a feeling like forever, is uh, the product listing uh, at uh, My Toys. And you probably know this kind of stuff. It's because it's one of the biggest. Um, problems I would say or the classic problem in an e-commerce platform how to sort in which order to sort your products and when you are shopping online you will see a lot of these kind of problems um, and one for example is uh, the product overview page yeah so when you are clicking on Amazon for example for audio or for books first what you see is just a, a, a um, an overview of all the products in this category. And um, uh, that is also a problem how to sort this thing. And this is more about the inspiration. Yeah, You want to get an inspiration. And maybe I'm always comparing that with going shopping uh, in a shopping mall or in a, in, a, in a city and see the products in the windows. And then thinking, oh, this looks nice. 
and then you create somehow uh, an intention to purchase something, but you don't have it at the beginning. So this is the beginning, uh, if you want. So you creating an intention of um, purchasing, and then um, you have product recommendations, of course. You no, know, you you see that everywhere when you're going um, online, and most of these product recommendations are also product listings. Yes, it's, uh, um, it's, it's based by you by user similarity or by product similarity. And here we you have already somehow purchase intention. And we want to stimulate that a little bit, give you orientation saying like, maybe you are not decided yet, but hey, this could be something for you. And then uh, one of the other sortings, and that is a search, of course. Yeah, when we searching for a product, we want to have a valuant uh, uh, listing, a sorting of the products that are somehow relevant to our to our search term. And this is very important because most people who are looking in an online on a on site on our shop uh, on, um, on using the search are actually also buying things so here you want actually to conclude the purchase and actually everyone has heard about this uh, search algorithms this information retrieval theory about relevancy and uh, also recommendation i think a lot of people of you have heard about how to make uh, recommendations but today i'm especially talking about a normal overview page and how you are actually creating this kind of inspiration and for that you can have different sorting strategies one is my favorite random yes that works uh, very well when you're starting your e-commerce company and you have only 100 or 50 products you can do that randomly i mean don't bother more but for Mitos, who has at the moment 250,000 um, products and wants to have actually 1.5 million as a platform, random is not scary, is not good. You can risk some stuff. And one thing that uh, mostly has been done also at Mitos is so called rule based sorting. That means I have some de definition of rules that have been defined by human experts, by the way. So experts in their domain, purchase and marketing and so on, made these rules um, and uh, yeah, made the sorting based on them. Um, then you have what I call an adaptive sorting that is somehow sorting that adapts according to the defined target variable. And you have also the prognostic sorting that means that makes already a prediction about how the sorting should look like tomorrow. Um, I'm going now a little bit into details. I skip the random. I hope you uh, <laughs> can uh, survive that. Uh, that is random, yeah. So then we have the rule-based sorting. It's quite simple, yeah? When you look at the formula here, it is actually reminding you more like a regression analysis. But no, it's not. It is just that we have some variables, revenue 30 days, uh, in the last 30 days trends in the last seven days or the reach the availability of a product at the moment and what is happening now is that the business man or the woman uh, can now uh, decide how it will put the weights for these different variables for example you want to get rid of the things that you don't have so much anymore in your logistic center in this case you will wait or you will downgrade the reach parameter so then all the products that actually have not so much reach would be in the first places. And then you have this product listing score of the product. Or you want to say, I want to make revenue, and then you are pushing the revenue in the last 30 days variable a lot. This is very working very fine because, of course, you've derived um, rules from your business requirements. You can map your corporate goal. You can even say, I don't care about the revenue. I want more an optimization of the margin um, that I'm making with my product listing, that's totally uh, onto you. Yes, you can weight it um, um, and yeah, change it in, in a way. But the problems with this is always it is circular reasoning. When I am saying I want to make more revenue, yes, and then I'm putting all the products and uh, on the first uh, sorting and the first um, places that make me more revenue. Yeah, these are seen more often and meaning they will make more revenue. So I have always the same circle um, reasoning somehow. Yeah, so uh, of course, when I put them higher on the list, they make more revenue because they are seen more often. So um, do I now making more revenue because I'm, yeah, so it is quite complicated to get out of the circle. 
Um, and it has a high competency requirement. When there is someone who's changing all the ways, this kind of this kind of formula can be fucking sorry, um, really, really big. Yeah, this can be 20, 25 parameters that you can change. You have to be an expert to do that. And a lot of times there are incidents even at MITRES just because there was uh, the weights were not taken very well. So, and of course, these rules that you are doing there is more reflecting how you want to make business, but it's not reflecting what your customer actually wants. And um, so what we did was in the first place, actually making an adaptive uh, algorithm. And here we are going more into probability and statistics. Like, yeah, so we want actually at the end, we have this ranking of, an, um, of a list, so P, and that at the time T at the moment is the result from the probability that a customer, here the probability C, that a customer T purchases a product, so that is uh, here the E, under the scoring or under the, the list P at hand. On just simple language, we are just calculating the expected probability that a product is seen, that a product that has been seen on the, so on, on the list will be purchased. Yeah, and what we are optimizing here is actually to, uh, to have this the highest possible. So the list should reflect the best products or the best um, probability that a customer also will buy something. This is a very powerful approach because uh, here, meaning the, the, the demand of the customer is totally integrated already in this kind of formulas. Um, so customer feedback is integrated. Uh, it adapts to the current uh, demand. We a lot of seen that you, when you have trends, and then there are some trends in in, in the kids' uh, toys or something. You see that uh, once a year in um, in Germany there is this uh, game of the year announcement, and I can tell you one day later this this game that has been nominated or uh, awarded will be very high. Um, it's uh, easy to explain. Okay, when I'm not showing the formulas. I can explain that to business very easily, and I can, and it's uh, um, running automatically without any intervention from business. The problem here is, of course, it's not prognostic; it's just a snapshot, and it's very, very depending on the data actuality of the data at hand. You now, when I'm not updating my data, how much products that have been seen have been purchased? I'm hinking. I, I'm just behind the actual demand of the customer, and that's really crucial, especially today. Today is Black Friday, by the way, so uh, the things have to be actual and on the um, up to date. Yes, and I can only use some kind of uh, variables. I cannot integrate very easily, for example, some um, some margin information or so on. Yeah, so here I'm a little bit restricted with this kind of sorting. And then we have prognostic sorting that are more the learning to rank uh, algorithms. Uh, we are talking here. Um, there are several ones. Uh, there is uh, what you might know, question-based or support vector-based um, algorithms that are frequently known also for other ma machine learning problems, but there are specific ones like rank neck, soft rank, lambda rank, um, but all they have more or less in common that they try to optimize the effectiveness of the ranking towards a certain relevance criteria. I'm coming to that in a second. And um, normally, how this um, optimization is measured is with the normalized discounted cumulative game or NDCG uh, that is uh, just showing you how much, um, yeah, how good actually your list is performing towards your relevance criterion that you have. Um, and you will see somehow that is very complicated, um, especially for my use cases. Um, and what you're doing then, you are just taking historical data, you train the model, you test it on data in the future that has not been in the, in the training set yet, and then you deploy it for the next day. So you have somehow already somehow a prognostic uh, ranking because you are trying already to predict somehow how the ranking should look like. Um, and here I can use a lot of variables to, to be uh, associated with the product. So this ranking is really optimizing over the lengths. Yeah, when I'm having this MDCG, I can uh, optimize the whole list actually if I want. And I think it's important, most likely you will not do the whole list, but you will at least have a lot of the list to be uh, measured with this. 
and I can also forecast a little bit the future demand. The problem is here, um, this implementation takes much more longer, uh, especially the development uh, and the mathematical background is really difficult for me to, to discuss that with the business that has not so much in, um, information about that. And one is this specific point here is, is actually learning to rank are algorithms that are used for information retrieval for all these search algorithms. Yeah, most of the search when you're doing search, most of this algorithm behind that are learning to rank algorithms. And the relevance criterion is here just that um, the search, uh, the, the, the result of the search is relevant to the search term. And that is a lot of problems when you are just doing it from inspirational product overview page because you don't have a search uh, term that has been searched. So you have to uh, how, somehow to build this relevance in, in a way that it reflects somehow the goal of this overview page. You can imagine that for that we used actually our adaptive sorting and, and did a little bit calibration over that. Um, so we uh, could build us ourselves a relevance criteria. Um, so, so when you have all these um, strategies how to um, to make a um, product listing algorithm or product listing, um, they are of course varying a lot in modeling difficulty and system complexity. What do I mean with that? With modeling difficulty, I mean that of course the mathematical behind all this is of course much more complex when I'm doing this learning to rank or prognostic a product listing um, score, because yes, I had to think about how do I actually model this relevance criterion? How do I do that? Yes, that is already much more complex when I'm just saying, hey, I'm, I'm modeling the, the probability of a customer will buying it. Um, and also the system complexity is also growing, of course, when I'm going more into sophisticated uh, uh, um, algorithms, then I have also to maintain them uh, much differently than I have it easy, uh, an easy um, algorithm. And this is actually very important that I want to tell, tell you here that uh, we not did the, we had the rule based already in, in, in my choice. I think at least even in, in a new time, there, there was already this rule based uh, uh, thing. Um, we just not did just the learning ranking as a first step. We did this adaptive one in the first step to, to get, gain also trust and acceptance of our business. Because there they could understand what we did. Yeah, I, I cannot explain a marketer about a learning to rank. He will understand to a certain degree and not. So they understood us and we could show, hey guys, these are the numbers. Uh, it's working. And then we had trust, acceptance, and also then we can do whatever we want somehow. Yeah. So we are free and they trust us and we can go like a little bit more complicated. Then they don't understand us anymore, but they saw it's working. And you see that also here, um, I gave you a little bit of insight about the technological stack of this product listing. Um, so uh, Actually, the main part is the database and our data science analytics server. Um, uh, we are getting all this data from web, uh, web tracking, our products from sales. We are mangling them in the database. Um, so the, the first adaptive uh, sorting was uh, working very well um, on the database. Uh, server was not needed so much now in the in the new uh, learning to rank model prognostic one, and we need also the server somehow. And then it is imported into the solar system. Solar is, a, is an engine uh, that is specifically used um, for search uh, indexing and everything. So here we're using this technology. Uh, maybe you have uh, heard about elastic search. Um, it's the same one, it's the same um, uh, comparable with solar. And then uh, through the product service of the backend team, where actually all the the SKUs, it's called stock uh, S SKU stock units um, numbers, um, getting uh, translated with all the information about the product, uh, the size, um, the color, and so on, and then um, uh, will be seen in the front end on the product overview pages. So um, yes, so. As I said, we um, put 
the, the adaptive PLS already into production. Um, as I said, we started simple and now we grow more complex. Um, we made in the first round this, uh, what you have already had in the presentation, the 7% uh, conversion uplift. That was quite huge. Um, the revenue per visitor also went up to uh, 6.5 and, and a very good uh, quality criteria for this kind of overview pages is the bounce rate that was dropping to 12%. Meaning, bounce rate means that when the customers or the user comes on the site, sees this product overview page, he stays uh, more likely with our sorting than with the other rule based one. Also, yeah, rule based is not showing the demand of the customer, right? It's adaptive much more. So now and then uh, this year, we started to uh, go to the learning to rank algorithm. Um, most things has to be done, but we are still planning the A-B test. So I cannot present you some more numbers here. I can give you, it might be more or less uh, than the uplift that we generated with the first round. Um, uh, we have some colleagues in Otto. We are part also of the Otto group. This is also a, a big retail company. They uh, also made this prognostic PLS and they have um, achieved some high sales four to 5% uplift. So maybe we can uh, get that too. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> I'm also very curious, uh, but yeah, I uh, hope uh, we are not testing at the moment because we have uh, Black Friday, Christmas. I mean, uh, we have to be uh, stable at the moment. So I cannot present you so much about uh, the AP test for now. When you are interested, by the way, um, to join um, the MITRES group, we are still looking for some analysts, a digital analyst and a junior data analyst. Um, yes, just go on on, on, uh, on our job page, uh, look around. Um, you can switch between the languages. Here's the link for the English version. And yeah, so that is it, I think. Um, thank you very much. And yeah, please let's stay connected, stay tuned. Uh, I'm very curious what the next numbers will tell us. Thank you very much, Sebastian. It's perfect timing, actually, because we have now um, four more minutes for questions. No one posted anything on the chat uh, yet, but maybe they were waiting until you finish. Um, I encourage you to ask your questions. If you are curious about anything, uh, please do so. So um, I cannot see the name, uh, named RS uh, asks, um, why you are not directly using the existing and advanced algorithms from your mother company, the Otto Group. So the collaboration with Otto Group, maybe you can mm -hmm. tell us. Yes, um, of course, we, we will test this um, algorithm next year. Uh, we have already tried, um, uh, we are already planning the integration of this solution of Otto. We want, of course, I'm a fan of benchmarking and I'm a fan of competition somehow in a way uh, which solution is better? Yes, we are planning that and uh, we want to look at it. Um, why um, we're not doing this uh, directly at the moment is just like this algorithm was mostly tested and built in, in, uh, in, some, cons uh, in some companies of auto that are actually buying, uh, selling clothes um, and so on. And we are a different business model. We have uh, toys. Uh, we are a family retailer, so this the, the products are totally different. Um, yes, uh, that is was the main reason. But uh, we can just assume that this might be a problem. Maybe it's not. So we will test it next year. That's cool. We are looking forward to hear more about that. <laughs> and Alexandra is asking about the adaptive sorting. How it uh, compares uh, or connects to sorting by popularity. Yes, it is actually when you want, it is a popularity sorting, exactly that, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I already put our LinkedIn uh, profile link. So if you have uh, more questions to Sebastian or I, so you can connect us on LinkedIn. And uh, otherwise we still have two more minutes. Maybe you can tell us about the data warehouse structure because uh, you have a quite a rich tech stack at, at MyToys. 
Yes, um, so in the data warehouse uh, scene, I would say, we are now um, building a new data warehouse uh, in a data world uh, model um, that is uh, a much advanced way how to, um, to deal with data in the data warehouse domain. So uh, still working on, uh, on progress um, and we are moving there a lot. Um, so this is one part, and then we are going also more into the data engineering thing, where we built already our first prototypes for data lake uh, scenario. Um, for example, what I told you also today, um, when I'm uh, calculating uh, the PLS uh, versions, um, the thing is that we get them only once uh, a day, uh, because we are waiting for exports of our web tracking company that we are using. And so we want to go away from this a little bit uh, to be more flexible to also update uh, this uh, sorting also within the day. So this is also something that we are trying to build at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, data vault is really interesting. And also yeah. the, the all the tools you have uh, <laughs> give so much um, opportunity for people working there to get experience. Yes. And um, Livia is asking about the future selection process. I, I actually personally also am interested in hearing a little bit more about this. And we have already one more question, so. The feature selection process of the, the language rank algorithm because there are, so, there are things. Um, yes, so actually um, we kept most of the features that we discussed there, uh, that we saw at the beginning. Um, because everyone had more or less, we were using an XGBoost um, um, algorithm here, and it was actually is quite um, robust, I would say, against um, some, yeah, some, yeah, for more variables. So we didn't saw any problems of overfitting here. Uh, so we used most of the feature that we actually put in the model, and they are very interesting and also business things availability. Uh, the season of the product. This is now a winter product, this is a summer product. Um, so this is all very inf important information that is also uh, actually asked by business. Yeah? So also here I was thinking we have to put them in. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so this is our, all this um, kind of um, variables that we can now also consider in our sorting. I see. Yeah. Another question which I would also ask, uh, Felix initiated uh, this question. So um, what uh, were the most time consuming parts of the whole process? And I connect this to your favorite uh, parts of the process and most challenging troubling parts. Tell us a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I can show the technical stack, maybe then uh, this <laughs> comes uh, clearer. So to be honest, at the, at the, at, at, as we started with our first product, um, what was actually the challenging one is that we wanted to make an ABC test <laughs> and the shop was not ready to make an ABC test. It could only do an AB test. And this was the most frustrating part because we had to wait to test our first version. So. Um, this was the most frustrating part, but actually everything was getting quite smoothly. And now with the learning to rank or the prognostic PLS, what is here more, fr was more frustrating is that the search for, for uh, information retrieval and search and recommendations is quite good, but you don't find so much uh, use cases for a normal overview page. Okay. And there we really have struggled a little bit how to define a relevance criterion. And this was the most was the most interesting one because we had to discuss what do we want to do, what is for us relevancy, what does uh, how the criterion has to look like, um, and this was the most frustrating one. Yes, and of course uh, that I cannot test at the moment is also frustrating, but yeah, I cannot end, um, do anything against that. It's Christmas time, and yeah, oh. we have some <laughs> rules <laughs> uh, for Christmas, so. Yeah. yeah, of course. So let's be punctual to end this session. Everyone maybe uh, is eager to have their lunch. Um, I shared the link to the next uh, data lift event, number three. It's going to take place on a Friday, 24th of January. So we all uh, 
look forward to see you there again. Thanks for your participation, for your questions and feedback. Uh, let's give an applause last time to Sebastian with these reactions, some interaction. <laughs> Yay, thank Yay. you very much. And you I wish you all nice. a very nice weekend. Yeah, you too. <laughs>